Good evening, and perhaps to have the opportunity to say something about uh, dual use uh, policy and biosecurity in the Netherlands. The Netherlands, <coughs> the land of Rembrandt, the land of Vincent van Gogh, the land of Johan Cruyff, but also the land of uh, Ron Fouché. <laughs> <laughs> for some, a hero, for others, a villain, maybe. But uh, I think, certainly for himself, in the first place, a scientist, a biologist, who's trying to do his work and who, who says he's surprised by all the discussions that he has invoked. Uh, short history of the Netherlands and biological weapons. I think we have a rather clean history uh, with biological weapons. Uh, uh, we never had our own biological weapons programs, so we did not have to dest destroy anything when the Biological Weapons Convention uh, came into force. We were a state party in the 1925 Geneva Protocol, and also from the beginning, state party in the BTWC, the Biological and Toxins Weapons Convention, which came into force uh, in 1975. And moreover, Dutch diplomats and Dutch politicians were very active uh, always in BTWC meetings. This got a translation in how the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences got involved in all these debates. Uh, in 2004, 2005, uh, there were uh, in the BTWC was spoken about the possibility of developing codes of conduct for scientists and other people working in the life sciences. And uh, the Netherlands Academy took up this role and played a very active role in the disseminating of the and the preparing of the IAP declaration. The IAP is the Inter-Academy Panel. It's an organization of uh, uh, academies of science from all over the world. And uh, in 2005, they gave a declaration on biosecurity, uh, which was signed by, I think, now about 68 or 70 academies of science from all over the world. And the, the uh, declaration was on awareness raising, on safety and security measures, on the importance of education and information about dual use and biosecurity, accountability, and measures of oversight. This got a translation also in a Dutch code of conduct uh, for biosecurity. On the request of our Ministry of Science, uh, uh, the Academy uh, started a working group preparing a code of conduct uh, for life scientists on the issues of biosecurity. Um, this was not only done top, top down, but we had an advisory board of about 35 people who are working in the laboratories or who had uh, res responsibility in institutions, etc., to uh, give their comments on our code of conduct. And I can say you, I was the secretary of this uh, working group that our first draft uh, was uh, completely uh, uh, not, not accepted by uh, by these people and so we could start over again. And I hope this led to a good code of conduct. Uh, I will not go into details of, of the code of conduct, but it has as main issues awareness raising, research and publication policy, which became, of course, very relevant in the h 5 one case. Also, uh, some principles about ac accountability and oversight, about internal and external communication, about the accessibility of uh, laboratories and uh, uh, research institutes, and last but not least, also about shipment and transport of biological agents. But it is a code of conduct, and the main uh, thing what, what the code of conduct can do is awareness raising. And uh, as I said, it was uh, developed uh, and created by uh, scientists themselves, but who should enforce it? That's question, that's always a question in a code of conduct. And uh, we learned that this uh, was not always working when the H5N1 debate started. I will not go into the details of the debate itself. I think uh, Simon will have his uh, comments about this. But what I can say is that because of the research project of, uh, of Ron Fouché, the Netherlands was in the center of the debate, maybe in, in the center of the perfect storm uh, <laughs> that uh, Michael was talking about. Uh, uh, it was solved in, in the Netherlands by uh, 
by the government who have no regulation to to do uh, to do something with with this. Uh, and the only thing they had was an export license uh, regulation, which was an EU regulation, or is an EU regulation still existing? And uh, the uh, government asked uh, Fouché <coughs> that he should ask for an export license before he could publish his article in Science. This gave a, a, a lot of discussions which, which are still going on until today. And lesson one is that a code of conduct is not enough. Fouché knew the code of conduct. Moreover, he was even in the advisory board when we uh, developed the code of conduct. But still, we got in this debate. For our Ministry of Science, it was reason to ask a new advice to our academy with as main questions how to deal with dual-use research and who should deal with dual-use research. Um, the KNAW, as is the Dutch abbreviation of uh, the Royal Academy, uh, started a committee with seven members from different uh, disciplines, from life sciences, from medicine, law, security studies, and again, an advisory group of more than 30 persons, also from science, policy, security, government, and from research practice, for instance, biosafety officers. We also had, uh, in the development of, of this new report, many national and international contacts, uh, conferences, etc. And this resulted in the publication of a new report, which now about a year ago, November 2013, was presented to our Ministry of Science. And we will organize, and I said we will organize, a national conference about, uh, about this uh, advice when we have the reaction of the government. But first, some of the main results. Uh, it's important, this one of the conclusions and recommendations, to consider biological factors and properties as well the social and political context in determining dual use risks. This is uh, an important aspect. We had uh, the, the past few days uh, a lot of discussions uh, at the Royal Society about dual use, dual use of concern, and who should decide it. What's uh, for the Netherlands uh, report important is to say that you do not only have to look at the biological aspects, but also at the societal and political aspects. Let me give you one example. Uh, it, it could be thinkable that you do a dual use project uh, or experiment here in London or in Amsterdam, but that you never should do the same experiment, for instance, in Aleppo or Damascus or another city or in Syria. So these considerations can play a role. Further point was that we plead for, for an integrated approach from security and scientific perspective. So let Security experts and scientific experts give, uh, give their judgment. For the scientists, it's important that, uh, and that's, as an academy, we are also, of course, looking at the uh, interests of scientists. For them, it's important that it's scientific feasible and also that it is uh, feasible in, for, for policy and for institutions. No more bureaucracy, but more clarity. That is what we say that uh, that could be reached. And more practical, we have uh, suggested to start a small permanent biosecurity advisory board. Not, I think, not to be compared with the NSABB in the United States, which is much, much greater, but for the Netherlands, a small permanent advisory board uh, could be enough. And last but not least, we also plead for more international cooperation and coordination. And uh, as, as I said, we are still waiting now for a reaction of, uh, of, of Dutch government. It's difficult for them. The seven departments, uh, our ministries and, and uh, government services, are involved in preparing the reaction and all have, their, of course, their own interests, their own questions, their own responsibilities. So we still hope that, uh, that they will come with a reaction soon. Informally, we have heard that they accept uh, our main conclusions and recommendations, but uh, we have to wait for it, and then we will organize our international conference. Until that time, we say, count your blessings. Things can always get better and could always be worse. And that's maybe <laughs> the present situation in the Netherlands, I think. And so more information, you can get at our website, and you can email me if you want. Okay. Thanks, Mr.